know your department's got money to burn when you start making barbecue movies. Based on a recipe by Stephen King. New England barbecue and Gilbert and Sullivan? This checks all my boxes. Everybody get out your wet naps. This is one fancy ass barbecue. Oh, she's singing a passionate defense of dry rub seasoning. My next piece will be an aria from Verdi's Un Giorno di Barbecue. Who talks? Hello. I'm Sally Knapp. Hi, Sally. And I do the leading soprano roles with the American Savoyards. You've probably never heard of them. We spend our summers in the state of Maine, here at the Gilbert and Sullivan Festival Theater in Monmouth. Next to Hooters. The company enjoys working in this unusual theater. And when we have leisure time, we enjoy sports and outdoor cookery. We love the very model of modern outdoor cookery. Once we had a chicken barbecue beside the lake. The end. Just such a barbecue as you might have in your own backyard. But, you know, fruity. Although our location gave us a chance to have an afternoon of horseback riding, swimming, and just relaxing in the sun. Uh-oh, theater camp. Our barbecue pit was of cinder block. It doubles as a badger mausoleum. By the time the last of our company arrived, the fumes of the starter fluid had burned from the charcoal. That takes several minutes. Then the sports camp across the lake stole all our soda. Our cook was a specialist who was to show us exactly how state of Maine broilers should be barbecued. As fulfillment of his community service sentence. His technique is disturbingly practiced. Many of the things he said and what he showed us about cutting also applied to frying and broiling in the kitchen. He also explained in curious detail what each chicken had done to deserve this particular fate. The stuff I said wasn't very interesting. The secret of starting broilers is to begin the cooking with the bone side of the bird towards the heat. On our two foot deep pit, the broilers were to be kept at low, even heat for five minutes before being turned. Repeat until you get a full confession. On smaller pits, where the birds are as near to the fire as six to ten inches, they have to be turned at about a minute and a half and must be basted at once. Speaking of getting basted... We were using only one layer of briquette. And we forgot to light it, but otherwise delicious. When you have a barbecue by the water, there's always something to do while the chicken is broiling. But there's one way of waiting for dinner that is perhaps somewhat exclusive to the American Savoyers. Spazzy play acting. It's an excuse for a busman's holiday. Ugh, this is the kind of group that starts singing on an airplane. Whatever our picnic sport, the summer sun is itself a principal attraction. Ooh, now I'm the broiler. <laughs> Whoopsie. Anyway, that's how prison marriage works. Now it's time to turn the broilers. And they have to be basted with barbecue sauce to help retain the natural juices of the meat. Mmm, chicken juice. In some parts of the country, when anyone speaks of barbecue sauce, they mean a highly seasoned hot sauce. Sure. In Maine, the preference is for a bland sauce. <laughs> of course it a is. A basting sauce which seals in moisture and brings out the flavor of the broilers. The same is true of the actors, if you know what I mean. Our recipe called for two parts of vinegar, two parts of water, with one part of oil or butter, and salt to taste. Okay, that's enough. Some of our company come from states which oh. use hot sauce. For them, we use the same basic ingredients, a little Worcestershire sauce, and put in a few dashes of chili, and a few garlic flakes. Go back to Connecticut, spice lovers. Whatever the sauce, 
Basting with the basic ingredients helps to seal in the broiler's moisture. Though here in Maine we prefer it dry. Our broilers cooked for five minutes with the bone side down. Five minutes in the bone zone, got then it. Then they were turned to cook on the skin side just half as long. Then add bacteria to they taste. They have to be cooked and turned like that for an hour or slightly more, depending on the size of the birds and the depth of the pit. That's my favorite chick tract. Of course, a brisk wind speeds the cooking time. And knocks Craig right over. You can depend upon the aroma of broiling chicken to keep most of your party nearby. And attract the kids from the fat camp. The lawn can become a stage for informal instruction or practice. Here we reenact scenes from the lives of the broilers to honor them. But even broiling chicken won't dissuade your hobbyists from brief excursions. We spotted a leprechaun in this bush. This is the most fun anyone's ever had in Maine. Under normal conditions, it takes from one hour to one hour and 15 minutes to broil chicken halves, which weigh from one pound to a pound and a half. Just enough time to run act one of the Mikado. If the air is humid, or if the ground is wet, it will take 10 or 15 minutes longer. The cook is making a simple check. When the leg bone twists readily from the thigh meat, we can eat. Pour some soda water and grab a bowl of plain rice. Then things get weird when Cook shows us how to bury the broilers in a shallow grave. The whole gang is delighted at the prospect of bland sustenance. God shows up looking for a burnt offering. That's right. Eat, my children, eat. Here in Maine, the preference is for traditional mastication. There's something about eating by a lake with the sun going down. And barbecued chicken is one of the few ideal outdoor meals. Garbage being another. It's easy to prepare and economical too. Chickens are free at most farms. Just help yourself. Goodbye. Okay, so let's recap. Up in Maine one time, the whitest people ever took a break from singing Gilbert and Sullivan to prance around by a lake and eat bland chicken. Maybe next we'll hop over to Rhode Island and have unbuttered toast with some mimes.